Yeah, soldiers, it is your boy, the anime States, coming back to another video, and hold on to your hats, because this is not talking about a, what, a scenario or trying to debunk a movie that doesn't fit canon. Nope. We're going to be diving into the only canon movie in the entire Naruto franchise, Naruto The Last. In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly why this movie is canon. Before we get into it, let me just say that the Boruto movie was once considered canon, however, as of now, I can't consider it canon. Or more like, I no longer think it's canon, and I got evidence to support why. Now, some of you may be thinking, wait a minute, this movie didn't happen in the manga, so how can it be canon? Well, my friends, if you take a closer look at the rank credits of the movie, you'll see the name of the one and only Masashi Kishimoto, who came up with the plot himself. If that's not a big enough hint, just take a look at all the promotional material that pretty much screams, Kishimoto wrote this. But wait, you might say, didn't you debunk Ford's signature in one of your previous videos, and Kishimoto wrote that one too? Ah, my dear friend, that is true, but the problem with Ford's Ninja is that it's riddled with inconsistencies. So I recommend rewatching it or watching it for the first time if you picked this video first for whatever reason. Human it simple stupid, the time frame just doesn't make sense when compared to the events in the manga and anime. I assume at least one person watching hasn't or might just need a refresher on the movie, so in short, that movie is a no-go. Not canon. Don't argue about it in the comments, please. But fear not, my fellow Naruto fans, Naruto Last is the real deal, and I'm gonna prove it to you. So sit tight and get ready for some mind-blowing evidence. Actually, some four years ago, Bruto M wrote a solid piece discussing why the movie is canon. So quick shout out to them. I'll link their horror posts below. I will add some additional context after reading their posts that they don't talk about, but with that out of the way, let's get to reading. Yes, it is 100% canon. Kishimo personally took part in the development of this movie. Instead of giving you false facts or some made-up memes, as one of the users who have answered before giving her personal view rather than answering your question, I would like to present you with some confirmed facts. I will be using information from mainly these two sites. The Naruto Last Movie Wiki, the Naruto Last Movie, Narutopedia. It is stated in the wiki that the last movie is a canon and story partially written by Masashi Kishimoto. Kishimoto not only helped in the writing the story, but also created new designs for the characters. And it's also stated that he enjoys seeing the development of Naruto and Hana's romance. As seen right here, I saw one of the users making fun of Hana's scarf in the movie, but guess what? The idea of the scarf was itself pitched by Masashi Kishimoto. It's based on Kishimoto's real life. His wife made him a scarf for him once, so he wanted to include that in the movie and make it a major factor, as he understood the love and time his wife has put in in order to make that scarf. Kishimoto reveals that his wife once made a scarf for him in an interview with Reina Ikoma of Nogizaka 46. Here's a video. This video doesn't have any subtitles, but someone made an effort to translate it. So, and here's the quote right here. So Kishimo personally made an effort to be a big part of this movie and to help in the development of Naruto and Hinata's relationship, as he had decided from the start that Naruto was going to end up with Hinata. Whether you like the movie or not, it doesn't change the fact that this movie is canon. TLDR, Naruto's last movie is canon, but Masashi Kishimo helped in writing the story and also create new designs for all the characters in the movie. If you're wondering where you can place the timeline for this movie, let me fill you in. At the beginning of the movie, they make it clear that it takes place two years after the war. I'm guessing it falls somewhere between episode 484 and Naruto Shippuden. Now let's say, talk about what this movie is all about. Naruto the Last is essentially a love story that gives us a glimpse into how Naruto and Hinata ended up together. Let's be real, these two didn't get nearly enough screen time together in the series, let alone their time to build their romance. So this movie is a real treat for all the Naruhina shippers out there. But canonically, it actually helps their relationship seem more legitimate even though there are awkward soccer and Naruto fanservice moments. The safe work for kind, not the dozen to rain. Yeah, you. I see you closing those tabs right now. Anyway, the movie clears up how they feel about each other, and Sakura is the one to help Hina with her journey to express her feelings, leading up to the end of the series where Naruto gets married to her, which is meaningful to actually build character relationships for the canon of the story, and also introduce some more Otsuski lore for people who are craving that, I guess. Comment below your opinions on the Otsuski. I know some people don't like their introduction to the story, while others do. Kind of similar to how when Goku was revealed to be a Saiyan in Dragon Ball Z and there was some split opinion there at first and maybe even still today. And if you're still wondering whether or not this movie is canon, let's just say that Kishimoto himself has gone on his way to publicly confirm that Naruto Last, Boruto Naruto the movie, and the Boruto manga are all canon. The middle child there has some problems, but today is not his day. We are talking about his father. Subscribe and click the bell to wait until I come back with the milk to show you why the Borto movie cannot happen. Now, I want a brief section for my review and my opinions on it. Despite being canned, here are my personal opinions about the movie. Not full review, just a brief summary of my thoughts on it in relation to being canned in general. 
I'm a big fan of Naruto and Nana getting together, but my opinion is how they got together are very mixed considering my boy had to get into a Genjutsu world to finally realize this girl liked him, which is kind of contradictory in comparison to the manga where I'm pretty sure Naruto knew what the hell she was saying. And again, it's kind of a shame that in the manga, there was a moment where these two actually, you know, talked about that or whatever, and it's kind of left on the wayside. I mean, if they had actually had a moment to like kind of talk about that and stuff and whatever, I think that would be better. But the fact that Naruto kind of had to get into a Genjutsu world to realize that Hinata liked him and stuff kind of doesn't work well for me, to be honest. That said again, the fight with Tonir was amazing and the kiss at the end was awesome. And also seeing Naruto with his kids and Hinata in the uh, after credits was really, really damn good. Enough to put a tear in a grown man's eye. Especially considering the fact that my boy has been trying to get some dubs in life all his life and the fact is he goes that far, man, and has his own wife and kids and eventually becomes Hokage, it's, it's just awesome. It, you, you can't hate it, even though people in the future are going to really hate Naruto's son. I would reveal my score here, but I'm going to withhold that for an actual review. I normally don't do this, but since this movie is canon, I'm going to do the opposite of what I've done and essentially withhold my score for the review that I will eventually maybe do on this movie and reveal my full fraught process into the scores I gave each of the other movies if you want me to. If you want me to review any of the movies I have covered for this entire series, comment below the following. Hinata has big mommy milkers. That way people watching can be confused if they peek at the comments, but also shows me who watched the video until the end. And this is going to be a fun, fun gag. I hope y'all enjoy. Hey, Future State is coming back to ruin the timeline. Well, the editing timeline for Drew well because he has to edit this part in last minute. Anyways, I felt that I need to discuss what is next for the series since by this point, as of 2024, there are no more Naruto movies or Borat movies for me to cover for the series. I am not counting the TV specials and OVA since those are not technically movies. But that does not mean I am not covering them for this series, however. A while back, I did a poll on what I planned to cover next for a series, and the light novels won the poll. However, after some discussion with Drew and the fact I wanted to read them to enjoy them, it made sense for me to push them back. Not just because I want to enjoy them, but because of the fact that uh, it's a bit hard for me to get into stuff with full text if you catch my drift. But to be clear, I decide I'm going to read the light novels once casually for a review series, so this means more content for you. But this also means I'll have to read them twice because I have to cover them for why they cannot happen or if they are canon, so they'll get a, a video more like this one. Also, I do want to be a little bit uh, clear about something, by the way. Uh, I, I need people to understand that this series is more for fun. I see sometimes people have like a bit more of a more offended or type thing or like, you know, talk about like why people can't use this or that. I, I just need to be very clear about something. This series is just for fun. I really do not need the war over like what is considered can or not. I really don't. This is just for fun. Anyways, the second choice that got the most votes was Nartsfair, which in my opinion made more sense to cover first. I've seen some of it before, even if it was a long time ago. Same goes with a lot of the Naruto movies as well. Also, even to this day, I hear people complain Naruto and Shippuden have too much filler. So maybe this series can either help people decide to check some of it out, or be more in line to skip it. Because until Naruto gets his own version of Dragon Ball Z Kai, it's going to be recommended, at least by me if you want less filler, to read the manga. This floor watch journey is probably going to take me and Drew longer than movies to cover, so here is my rough plan to cover them. Individual episodes will be released in volumes with multiple episodes covered in the same video. With filler arcs, they'll get their own view unless it's a short filler arc. Got it? Good. Okay, back to present day Sage. Well, thank you all for watching this video. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, it's very different compared to what I've done before, but it's pretty good. Shout out to Drew for ending this video, shout out to you guys for watching it, and yeah, this has been your boy, the Amish Sound. Peace. Yurha, bye bye. Peace.